Hello everyone. So in this lecture I will be briefly discussing the National Early Warning Score and the reason for this um, introduction is uh, because you will find this chart um, with every with each patient at the bedside and you will be using this chart uh, to monitor the patient uh, trajectory especially if the patient is uh, deteriorating over time uh, you will be able to uh, identify um, the trend and the clinical trajectory in time uh, to reverse it. So this is going to be a quick overview. As I said, uh, although you have the responsibility to familiarize yourselves um, with the actual uh, national critical guideline uh, that is found on the internet, and uh, I will leave um, uh, a link in the description for that. Uh, you should uh, go there, open the link, open the file, and uh, read the actual national guideline um, for uh, the early warning score. It is uh, absolutely important for you to be extremely familiar with this guideline um, because, as, as I said, uh, you, you will find yourself uh, shortly as interns on the wards and you will be dealing with uh, progressively deteriorating patients and you should be able to uh, observe, monitor and uh, intercept uh, deteriorating trends. So just to give a quick introduction, um, the early warning scores have been developed to facilitate early detection of deterioration by categorizing a patient's severity of illness and prompting nursing staff to request a medical review at specific trigger points. Um, this is done by utilizing a structured communication tool, which is the chart, while following a definitive escalation plan. So the uh, National Early Warning Score system is beneficial for standardizing the assessment of acute illness and enabling a more timely response using a common language across acute hospital uh, nationally. So how does it work in practice? So basically, um, the patient's vital signs, which are you know the blood pressure, heart rate, uh, the res respirate, are usually routinely recorded in acute hospitals. Uh, so with the early warning score system, each vital sign is allocated a numerical score from zero to three. Uh, on a color-coded observation chart, where this, the score 0 is the most desirable and the score 3 is the least desirable. These scores are added together and a total score is recorded, uh, which is uh, their early warning score. A trend can be seen whether the patient's condition is improving with a lowering of the score or it is improving with an increase in the score. So then care can be escalated to, serio to senior medical staff uh, if required. So the chart I will, I will show you um, does not apply to children or patients in obstetric care um, as early detection of deterioration in these two groups uh, are identified by different physiological parameters. Um, so this relates only for the adult patients, um, non-obstetrics. So as I mentioned before, you can imagine that the main benefit of adopting the National Early Warning Score is the standardization in the assessment of acute illness severity enabling a more timely response to patients who are deteriorating and using a common language across all hospitals. So let's now just uh, dive into it and have a look at um, the actual chart. We go to page uh, 65 of this uh, guideline and we find um, the actual chart that you will find at the bedside uh, with the patients. So um, that's the first page you find uh, the front page here. Um, you will find the name of the hospital on the uh, top left and the patient uh, address graph on the top right. Uh, from here, you find the immediately you, you, you find the escalation protocol flowchart. So let's uh, have a look at this and so we'll try to familiarize with this table and try to understand it. So if you find that your patient has a total score of 1, uh, your minimum observation frequency will be 12 hours. So um, you just alert the nurse in charge, uh, the nurse in charge of the patient, and um, then the response here is the nurse in charge to review if new score, uh, if new score. So if the score uh, changes. So basically for each um, score, so every time you assess, you'll find the score, and then you'll, you'll have the score, you have your um, minimum observation frequency, who to alert, and what response should follow. So that was the uh, response for one. When you have a total score of two, then frequent, uh, frequency of observation is six hour, hourly. You alert, so the nurse in charge is alerted um, and the nurse in charge responds. 
if the score is 3, then observation is for hourly. Again, the nurse in charge is alerted. Uh, plus, now the on-call uh, team, the SHO uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the team uh, looking after the patient. And the response here is that the SHO should review within the first hour. So already from score 3, you have an activation of a doctor. Okay, so when you have a new, a new score, a new score of, of three or above, uh, so when you have three, let's say here, uh, then you call the SHO and the SHO has to review within the hour. If you have a new score of four to six, the observation frequency becomes one hourly. And here, uh, same, um, the SHO and the nurse in charge are alerted. And the response is the SHO should review within half an hour and start the screen for sepsis and we'll have a look into that in uh, in a moment if no response to treatment within one hour con contact the registrar and consider continuous patient monitoring consider transfer to higher level of care now so again if you have a new score of four to six uh, you start to get uh, a much more activated so you have the asset show on board you have an hourly monitoring, you have um, a screen for sepsis, and if there is no change in the clinical trajectory after after uh, whatever the SHO has decided to, to treat with, then uh, the registrar should be involved. So that's a, a more senior doctor in the in the team. Um, and then here there has to start, there has to be a conversation revolving around, do we need to uh, involve uh, or transfer the patient to higher level of care settings, such as a high uh, dependency unit or even an intensive care unit. So that's just a consideration at this stage. Now, when uh, your new score is above seven, then uh, that's the maximum activation uh, that you can uh, get here. You have a, a observation frequency of half an hour. Um, everyone is involved, really, uh, you're talking uh, from the nurse, the bedside to the consultant, all should be aware of the patient clinical condition. The registrar should be uh, involved immediately to review the patient. Um, the monitoring should be continuous uh, and there has to be there a, a, a solid uh, conversation revolving around escalation of care. And if the hospital has an emergency response team, then the emergency response team uh, should be activated. Now, so those scores here on the left side are total scores um, of the patients, and you, uh, we will we will see that in a second now in the, in, in the actual uh, chart. Now you will notice here that um, there are single score triggers. So those are uh, single scores that trigger an immediate escalation of uh, of alertness and response. So for example, if you have a um, if you have a score a score of two, but added to a bradycardia, which is defined here as a heart rate below 40, then the monitoring should be every half an hour and the SHO should be involved um, and, and, the, and the SHO should, should review immediately. So if you have a score 2 here, uh, the uh, management was done by the nurse, whereas here if you have a score 2 plus bradycardia below 40, then the SHO, the doctor, should be involved. If you have a score of 3 at any single parameter, and uh, we'll see that in a second. So if you have a score of three, let's say in the um, blood pressure or in the um, respiration, then that also activates the SHO immediately. And if, if the SHO is unable to reverse the trajectory, then the registrar should be involved and we should start considering activating an emergency team. Okay. So you can read here in certain circumstances, a, a score of three in a single parameter may not require half an hour observations. Uh, for example, some patient on oxygen because oxygen uh, increases the uh, use score, uh, but then you have to take that into account. So if the patient is known to need oxygen uh, and that triggers your three, then you don't really need to observe every half an hour because you know that the patient is on oxygen. Okay, so that's uh, kind of an overview of um, the escalation protocol. So the reason we monitor patients and we assign score to each variable is because then we sum up the scores and each uh, class of scores triggers a certain reaction. So this is very important for you to know because again, as I said to you, you will find yourself as an intern shortly and uh, you should be very well aware of this uh, escalation protocol.
so you don't find yourself alone, you know that there is an actual protocol to follow here. Okay, so here you have a little key at the, at the bottom. Um, oh, sorry, I just forgot to mention here an important notice. Um, so if the response is not carried out as well, the CNM nurse in charge must contact the registrar or consultant. So if this protocol is not followed, then the nurse in charge, uh, the CNM, uh, must contact the registrar, so the senior doctor or, or the consultant in charge of the patient. Also, if you are concerned about the patient, escalate care regardless of score. So this means that if you have um, a clinical um, suspicion, uh, that the patient is acutely deteriorating and um, that's what you feel because uh, you have been observing the patient for um, a little while and you, you are actually concerned that there is an important change in the clinical condition then yes you can activate regardless of the actual score um, so you can activate whoever is around uh, you know doctors or nurses and um, and the plans should follow so here at the bottom you have uh, the early warning score key so uh, those are the variables that we're going to score and we'll, uh, we'll see them now on the second and third page. And um, for each variable, you will see that there are uh, different ranges and um, there is a range of normality uh, where the score is zero. And there are uh, variables uh, that, you know, at s some other ranges uh, trigger a score of one, whether it uh, is above or below the normality, a score of two, and a score of three. So a score of three uh, can be either, uh, you know, a, a, a very high um, value of the variable or a very low value of the variable, um, you know, um, compared to the actual normal range. So, okay, let's go in the actual um, chart. Uh, when you open this chart, it's a four page chart. Uh, that what I showed you here was the first and when you open it you have the second and the third are in this um, combined here those are the second and the third chart uh, third page of the chart so um, okay let's zoom in here and you will find that um, sorry now you will find in the second and third page um, the actual um, the actual graph okay so here you have a respiration score okay so that's the respiratory rate and you can see that there is a normal range between 12 and 20 where the score is zero and above and below so you uh, basically that that's it's filled by the nurses so uh, the nurses will put a, a dot uh, wh whatever is is actual seen whenever is is, uh, is observed um, so let's say the patient has a respirate of, of 16 which is normal they'll place a dot in here so that's a score of zero so uh, if you place a dot here, the score here will be zero. Okay. Uh, if you place a, a dot up here above 25, then the score here will be three and so on. So that's the respiratory rate score. Then you go down to the SpO2, the saturation, oxygen saturation score. Uh, above 96 is zero, it's normal. Below that, it becomes abnormal. And if, it, if it's below 91, uh, if you place a dot here, then the score would be 3, and so on. The FI2, that's the inspired fraction of oxygen. Uh, again, room air is 0. If you have any oxygen on board, your score will be 3. We go down to the blood pressure. Um, as you see here, um, a systolic blood pressure between 110 and 250 is uh, deemed as a score of zero although obviously when you have a systolic blood pressure above 200 the doctor should review uh, what's going on there anyway uh, if your systolic blood pressure drops below 90 then that's a three and you place a three here then you go down to the heart rate again normal range above and below you place a dot and you have the number here one zero one two one three or three now all the dots that you you will find here will be connected with a line so you actually can see the trend of uh, of the variable where is this going if the heart rate is going from a normal 80 to 130 then you see that you know there's a time frame where the patient is deteriorating so you can actually visualize the trend 
Then you go down to the neurological assessment here and we have the AVPU, uh, alert, voice, pain, unresponsive. So if the patient is alert, it's a zero, if anything else, it's a three. Okay, and then you, get the uh, you, you have your temperature at the bottom here. And again, normal range, above and below. So um, as you see, for each variable here, you can uh, you have numbers, uh, you have a score. So we, we take all the scores from each variable. And at the bottom of the chart, there is the total early warning score. So the sum of all the scores that you found in each column. So, and this is the score that you are going to uh, read when you actually uh, go there and look at the at the escalation protocol. So if you say that you have a, a score of uh, five in the total early warning score, then you fall into this uh, category. And then you have to activate the SHO who has to treat. And if it doesn't uh, treat appropriately, then the registrar should be involved, etc., etc. So if uh, at any of those variables you have a three, then again, as we saw um, before, if you have a three in any of the variable of the parameters, then again, you have to involve the SHO and SHO has to review immediately. And if still concerned, then call the uh, registrar, etc. Okay, so uh, this is how the chart is filled. And this is how you read the scores. You score your file, you find them at the bottom of, of the chart here. Okay, now, when you find yourself uh, with someone who is having um, a problem in some of their systems, um, so patient is progressively deteriorating and um, probably sometimes rapidly deteriorating, you might want to start your ABCDE. And you have a little help here on the left side of the use chart. Um, when you have uh, a breathing problem here, because you know the first three were the you know were correlated to the breathing uh, assessment, airway and breathing. So if you have a problem here, you follow the AB. Uh, so you consider your airway uh, is patient hypoxic acidosis, and so you there are some suggestions here on how to intervene to try to rescue um, uh, in the short term. So immediate medical review, um, give oxygen, okay. Uh, request chest X-ray and ABG, arterial blood gas. If there's an airway obstruction, activate the emergency response system uh, or, you know, someone who's uh, able to resolve the airway obstruction. Um, and uh, sure, if you have respiratory acidosis, consider early non-invasive ventilation, but that's uh, probably something that you might discuss later on uh, during the assessment. Um, but the bottom line here is that you have a little help here on the left side of the chart where it is described that you should uh, start to give oxygen, request a chest X-ray, and an ABG. Those three things are basic are basic things that must be done for the patients who are deteriorating from the respiratory point of view. So give oxygen, request a chest X-ray, and obtain an arterial blood gas. So arterial blood gas. If your problem lies in the, uh, you know, circulation, so your blood pressure or your heart rate, then again here, uh, little help on the left side, consider pain, hypercapnia, uh, what should you do? You should immediately call uh, a doctor and have um, a 12 lead ECG done, you know, because when you call uh, senior help, uh, those things must be already be present. So the senior help can, uh, the senior help can actually come and interpret uh, those uh, elements. So the chest X-ray, the ABG, ECG. So 12 lead ECG. If you have hypotension, um, then consider bleeding, MI, or sepsis. Of course, all the causes uh, you should consider really of uh, circulatory shock, uh, which we discussed in the previous lecture. Um, okay, again, uh, interventions for hypotension, uh, medical review, check the blood pressure. Again, uh, sometimes, you know, there's a defect in, in, in the blood pressure cuff, so just check it again. Obtain a 12 lead ECG. Uh, if there is no heart failure, give some fluids. If there is no improvement, again, call the doctor. Uh, sorry, call a senior doctor or senior colleague. And if, uh, you know, the use is three, really consider calling an emergency uh, response team. Tachycardia, uh, it says here, consider Siegel sign. That means that the heart rate is above the systolic blood pressure. Um, loss of consciousness, uh, MI uh, on the ECG, heart failure. If yes, again, consider activating the emergency team. Um, Again, if you have uh, something that goes uh, very rapidly in the wrong direction, uh, immediately call a senior doctor and start to think about the ACLS algorithm, uh, you know, the tachycardia ACLS algorithm, or again, uh, the bradycardia ACLS algorithm, if you have bradycardia. 
and you have bradycardia, uh, you consider electrolyte uh, disturbance, uh, drugs, or complete heart blocks, and that's the chapter again of ACLS. Um, immediate medical review, 12 feet ECG, etc, etc, etc. So you find little clues here on the left side of the chart um, for, for each uh, system, really. Uh, neurological deterioration, uh, again, consider hypoglycemia, acute brain injury, pupil response, uh, and intervention here, immediate medical review, capillary glucose, um, and consider activating the emergency response team again. Pyrexia or hypothermia, consider sepsis, and, you know, take bloods here, and we'll, we'll check that in a second, you know, commence the uh, sepsis 6 uh, regimen, we'll, we'll see that now in a, in a second. So there you have it, those are the uh, second and third page of the used chart. Uh, it looks intimidating at first sight, but really when you, when you look at it, it's really basically, um, uh, it's about, um, you know, filling those, uh, those, um, dots and uh, writing assigning it a score and summing the score at the bottom of the page and then you know act accordingly uh, looking at the left side for clues and looking also perhaps at the table here uh, to to actually check the escalation protocol and follow through okay so now we go at the last uh, the back page uh, the page number four of this uh, chart and that's the 2013 version that's the latest version that is on on the website uh, on the government website so uh, on the latest one you'll find the sepsis screen pathway uh, on the back page and let's have a look at this so sepsis screening pathway um, between brackets always use clinical judgment all right that goes for everything in medicine um, and here on the top uh, right corner it says adult patients Mm -hmm. So there is separate sepsis criteria for women in pregnancy, and there is actually another chart for uh, pregnant women. So use this sepsis screen pathway if the national early warning score is above or equal 4, uh, or 5 on supplementary oxygen, or if infection is sus suspected. So basically, if you have a patient who is deteriorating over time uh, with a, a score of uh, 4 or above, uh, or with an infection uh, that you are suspecting, then the doctor must be must be contacted uh, within 30 minutes. So here um, are any two or more modified systemic inflammatory response syndrome criteria uh, present. So are two or more of these present in the patient plus uh, infection is suspected? If yes, this is sepsis, and then you follow the six uh, sepsis six regimen within the hour, as we discussed in the sepsis lecture. So if no, then you follow a history and examination, and if in the absence of suspected infection, staff might proceed with using the newest protocol. So basically, it says here that if um, if there is none of these present and the infection is not really suspected um, or it's not really clear, then then you should go back to your physical examination and history taking and just uh, start all over again. If uh, two of these are present and you have a strong suspicion of infection, then yes, you have to consider it as a sepsis. And then you have to start your six, sepsis 6 uh, within the hour. So sepsis 6, sepsis six um, is you take 3 and you give 3. So you take blood cultures uh, before giving antibiotics. You take lactate and FBC and you take a urine output measurement. And you give three at the same time, or like shortly thereafter, if uh, you're just taking the blood cultures, then uh, after that you start your IV antibiotics. Within the hour, you start your oxygen and you start your IV resuscitation, as described in here. So you can uh, take a look at this and read the details. Okay. Obviously here, uh, if there is a DNR, so do not resuscitate order, uh, for this patient, then you should not uh, insist with treatments. Uh, but if there is not a DNR order in place, then yes, you should continue and you should treat the sepsis uh, with the sepsis 6 approach within the hour. Um, and then after you're starting treating uh, and uh, managing with the sepsis 6, uh, you look for signs of organ dysfunction, uh, you obviously look at your circulation, uh, you look at the urine output, at the, your brain, glucose, kidneys, and the liver, um, and then you look at those uh, organ dysfunction, and if any of this is present, then this is called severe sepsis. Although in the new definition of sepsis, um, sepsis and sepsis, uh, severe sepsis are combined in uh, the word sepsis. 
Um, so anyway, yes, you have to check for organist function, obviously, um, and then um, look for sign for signs of septic shock. So if you have a high lactate, if you have hypotension, um, then and if you have obviously uh, signs of organ hypoperfusion, then you're uh, dealing with a septic shock. And then you have to talk to the critical care um, people and uh, for an emergency consult. Um, okay, so basically that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, again, it was intimidating, but as you can see, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of uh, monitoring the uh, variables and the parameters, assigning scores and uh, summing up the scores and looking where we fall in the table and uh, following the table, the escalation protocol flowchart and uh, trigger the appropriate response uh, according to the protocol. It is important to follow the protocol because um, it is uh, it has been described how beneficial uh, the tra uh, track and, tra and trigger system uh, is for patient's outcome. So you have to look at the numbers, uh, monitor the trajectory and escalate when necessary. So that's uh, just an overview of the early warning score and we'll uh, try to um, see how that plays uh, when dealing with uh, cl clinical scenarios. So we'll, uh, we'll look at clinical uh, four clinical scenarios now and um, we, will discuss and we will discuss this chart dealing with these patients. Okay, thank you very much and uh, 